So in the last few episodes of Let's Plant, I've been working on the stream in the Patreon area. So far, you've seen me redo the stream, replacing all of the plants and creating a new tapestry, a new stream of blue. And this is the transition which leads into the Patreon shrine. Now, in the Patreon shrine, I removed all of the existing blue plants, but well, almost all of them, which are mostly just blue chalk sticks, which left me with a gap, a huge area with lots of bare spots to fill with, and I had to fill that with blues and greens. Before I could do that, I had to plant in the larger Patreon plants. These are the plants that would go into the large bowls. And the reason for me doing that is it's a lot easier for me to move around if I place the large plants in first before I finally work on the tapestry. And so here we are. I've been asking for your input on the plants that should go into the fifth bowl. And interesting enough, I also got this feedback that the Kante that's currently out in the Patreon shrine doesn't fit the overall theme. I've spoken with Oscarino about it and he's cool with replacing it with something more suitable. So that is something I would be doing. If you stick around, let's see what we make out of this. So as I mentioned, I've been given permission by Oscarino to replace this Kante with something more suitable. I've been thinking of using the Dix Pink because that was my original, my first ever freely in my collection. It has a bit of sentimental value so I think it's just fitting that it goes here. Now as for this Kante, I'm going to move this into another pot which I do not have yet right now. Until then, it's going to stay here. And I think I have to let you know that I intend to use this Kante as one of my entries into the cactus and succulent competition sometime in spring later this year so i need to find a a nice pot to place it in another great feedback that i got was that this string of pearls right here over at the stream they seem to be out of place in terms of colors because we have the blue here and it immediately abruptly turns into green I've gotten a comment from, I think it was Isa, who mentioned that I should probably look for something more blue. And I'm looking at my garden now. I'm thinking that I could probably use the Sidum Burrito. This is the smaller version of the donkey's tail of the Morganianum. And it is rounder and it is looking a lot bluer compared to this one. I'm not really sure if it will do well in this pot, so I guess I could do a combination planting. I'll mix the burrito with the pearls because I'm pretty sure the pearls can handle this part. So that's an option. Another thing I did in the stream was to replace all of the glocka. I pulled out everything, all of the clumps and replaced them with individual cuttings. I just wanted everything to be more uniform so they would be growing together again. Growing at the same heights and they'd be growing at the same speed which would be nice. I might be reusing this at other parts of the garden. Until I find a use for them, I'll just place them somewhere where they could grow for the meantime. I think I should also mention this, but I fully intend to remove all the plants here, redo the mound around the stream. But I'll be pushing that to some other time because my main focus right now is the Patreon Shrine and this is would probably be next, if not the Agavoidis area. But yeah, these plants have to go. So I'm just going to do a bit of reinforcement with them here and we'll see how they go. I need to pick some of the smaller strands because if I go with the larger ones, they would just break apart and they would have really large leaves. I don't think they would fit. So smaller strands it is. And like what I did with the pearls, I'm just going to stick them in and remove some of the lower leaves because that way they would have uh, this piece of stem sticking out. This, this would allow them to hold on to something and besides the new roots would be coming out of the node so I'm just giving, giving them a head start by giving them some clear space to work around in. So I'm just going to stick them in like so, 
somewhere between and around the string of pearls. The pearls in this instance would be giving shade to the, the burrito. And yeah, I'm just going to stick them wherever. My hope here is that the burrito would flow downwards. So I'm going to help that process along by turning around the cutting such that the, the burrito is already facing down. But yeah, I might need a few more strands. And you'll notice that I've mixed the, the two different types of uh, filler plants or spiller plants here and again I'm going for a blend of colors not just a single color I think the greens would still work here but I want to transition from this type of blue to this type of green so I'm using the burrito to soften that look for the transition I'm spilling around some of the leaves because this might still grow but knowing our weather, they're outdoors, they're, getting, they're still getting some sun. I think they would just burn. So we'll see how it goes. When taking cuttings, try to use the younger, younger stems because these ones would be growing more vigorously, you know, you'll be having better chances with them. You'll have to remember to, to cut closer to the tip rather than going at the very end because this part is older. That's pretty much it. This fell off so I just have to put it back and I've got another strand to work on. Put this here. I think a couple more would do. Just looking for the tiny strands this time. Yeah, these are tiny enough. I think we need more. Should be enough. Now the idea here is that the burrito is a continuation of the blue from the gloca and it has a slight gradient towards green. I guess you could consider them the rapids or the turbulence and the waterfalls. And the green provided by the string of pearls would be maybe the vines in the jungle. I don't know, there might be some vines near the waterfall, so I think it would work. So if you could imagine that all of these strands are starting to go down, it would look like waterfalls then. I don't know, maybe I just have a vivid imagination. Alright, now we can work on this area. In preparation for the rapids and the waterfalls, I would need to reserve a bit of space around here. I'm thinking a circular arrangement, something like this. And I'm giving this space for all of the spillers to fill in too. So all of the pearls would be confined into this little circle as well as the burrito. Now to start with, I'm going to just mark out the area. Unfortunately, I placed lots of pebbles here before, so it's a bit of work to get around them. But yeah, I'm going to start here and end here. This is more or less the circle that I'm thinking about. With this space reserved for the water, I'm thinking of using some light, spiky echeveria such as this Mexican giant right here. I think I'll be using them as the border around the water area and the reason I'm going for spikes is that if you think about the waterfalls, the foam below, there's a bit of turbulence so I think spikes would be representative of the water splashing around. I could probably use some violet queens as fillers as well because they also look spiky so maybe Mexican giant as focus pieces then violet queens to surround them. I'd have to go around and pick up my Mexican gems, but I think I have a few. So one's right here. So I've got, already got one that's right here. Just have to dig around it, pull it up. It even has its own pops, which I could probably use. And 
I'm pretty sure I have another one over there. So let me just go grab it. And here's the plants that I intend to use, but I just need to remove this to make some space. Before I can use them, I need to clean them up. And that means removing all of the dead leaves, removing some of the soil, and making sure the roots are all clean. And, by, and when I say all clean, I mean not tangled up, because tangled roots are no good. I'm just going to separate the pups here. In fact, I might even place this in small pots because I might decide to sell them in the future. So, yeah, I'm only going to use the large ones in this arrangement. So, yeah. Now, just to be clear with the roots, I only make sure I untangle them only if I see tangles. But if they are not tangled like this one, then I just leave them alone. I just have to make sure that I give them enough space to stretch into, which means that I also need to dig further down if I need to plant them. As for arrangement, I'm going to place the larger plants here just so they won't be crowding with the others. So Mexican giants would be somewhere around here. Should I include the largest one? Yeah, I might go do that because I think an odd number of plants would look better than just having two side by side you know three is better than two yeah i've decided to remove this from this spot because as you can see it's growing sideways it's trying to face the sun so i need to place it somewhere more exposed i think the new spot is more exposed than this and I think it's not growing as well as I expected it to be in this spot. It might be the shallow bowl, so moving it to the ground would make more sense. Like with the others, I'm going to clean this up, make sure the roots are not tangled. Man, this has lots of dead leaves. It's in dire need of cleaning. You might notice that I tend to mix the dead leaves in with the other, with the soil where I'm planting them in. I generally do this because why waste the nutrients, you know? At the same time, these leaves aren't infected with anything. So that is why I think it's an all right idea to do that. But in cases where the leaves are infected, say fungi or maybe some pests, then I would throw the leaves away. But in this case, the leaves are clean. I can use them directly. The soil here isn't particularly well draining, so I might have to replace this with some of my own mix. That is after I finish digging. just realized I have one more plant here. I think I'll use it. Again, I'm just removing the pups. I'd like them to grow separately from now on, just so they don't deform. As for the mama plant, this one would be going here. And I might want to add one more. And here, we're done. And right on this side, I plan to use the Violet Queens because they're tiny and they make great borders, great transition from the white pebbles. And besides, I've got Violet Queens here. So continuing along down here might not be a huge break in the design. So all we have to do is to move around these pebbles and we're going to get ready to work.
and there we have it i've filled up this area now with violet queens on the left side and elegance on the right side as well as some focus pieces care of the mexican giants i've also got lots and lots of stumps from the violet queens that i chopped i'm not going to throw this away just yet because i could still use this for propagation there might still be lots of pups growing from these stumps so i'll just place them somewhere safe as for this space, this is a huge void. There's still lots of blank spaces here, but I'm going to leave this that way because I'm, I'm going to allow the pearls and the sedums, the burrito, to grow into this area. So in a way, I'm just reserving the space for them. And I'll be topping up this area with some of the richer soil. That would encourage them to grow here. Apart from that, I just have to do a little bit of tidying up. Maybe a spray of water would do. Because these rocks, they look really filthy. But we've got the drop out of the way and in the next episodes, we're going to continue on towards that direction. This means that I have to rethink the plants that I'm using here. I might have to remove all of this imbricata or place some other focus plants like this one. Something large, something that would grab attention. That, something that would stand out or contrast from the competition, which are the fillers, care of the Violet Queen in the elegance. I've got lots of other light blue and white plants that I want to use in that space. And here they are. So we'll see where we go. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Sariscapades is made possible with the support of my Patreon sponsors. Patreon allows you to support content creators like me with a small monthly donation. You can pledge your support by heading over to patreon.com slash sariscapades. If you're in Australia, I've got some of my plants for sale. Check out my plant shop at seriescapades.com slash theplantshop with dashes.